Hi, Julie Roussel here. A momentary pause, I guess. Interruption, who knows. But welcome and thanks for joining in on this wet and kind of stormy Sunday night. So if I kind of get interrupted, I apologize for the wireless connection. Never know how it goes. But whether you're popping in live or watching on the replay, I'm glad you could join in. This is probably one of those last few Sunday nights because I was with football season, school, sports, and my new responsibilities as the JV boys volleyball coach. I may not always have the opportunity to get on Sunday nights, but I'm definitely gonna do my best to keep Wacky Wednesdays. So as always, if you hear something that you find helpful or resonates with you, please leave a reaction, um, comment your thoughts in the thread or helpful tips anytime. You never know when your words are going to inspire someone or even if you're just popping in to say, hey, I love and appreciate everyone. So share the video with anyone you think it might help and PM me if you have questions or wanna hear more. I'm happy to share the things that I'm learning and I hope that they help you. I do apologize, um, occasionally I am checking my notes. You see, I'm ter terrified and public speaking has always been one of my biggest fears. And it drives me crazy that no matter how hard I study and prepare during the week for my videos, you know, as soon as that live button comes on, something goes wrong and my brain goes blank and I've forgotten everything and fear just kicks right in. Don't know why, but I'm not gonna let it bring me down. Hey, Jenny, hey, Valicia, I thought I saw you pop in. Hey, Tammy, great to see you. Um, welcome, it's exciting. Oh, hey, Cindy, there you are too. Awesome lady, thanks for joining in. So let me ask the question for the night. When life knocks you down, oh, there you are. Hey, Jenny, nice to see you, lady. Hey, we gotta catch up soon. But um, let me ask the question. When life knocks you down, do you get up or give up? How does that work for you? Well, I wanted to share tonight the story of a Hall of Fame NFL football player whose rags to riches story just continues to inspire tons of young people as well as old farts like myself, to work hard, you know, to seize the opportunities and create the life and the success that you've always wanted. You know, I'll admit, I wasn't a fan of his, but after hearing his life story, I couldn't help but respect his character and the worth work ethics that paved his way to the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, I'm gonna give you a few clues, so see if you can guess who it is. Oh, hey, Drew, nice to see you. It's been a while, dude. See if you can guess, I bet you know, as you follow football. But um, this Hall of Fame player dreamed of being an NFL wide receiver, but he was chosen as a quarterback in his tryouts because he could out throw everyone else and no one tried out for the position. So he was volunteered to be the quarterback. You know, he was absolutely devastated because he thought there was no way he would ever get to the NFL as a, as a wide receiver especially as a quarterback. And um, he did manage to play in college where he sat bench for UNI as a quarterback for four years. I don't know if you know UNI, it's a smaller school, until becoming a starter in his final year. You know, he led his team to an eight and three record and playoff um, appearances. That's the word I was looking for. He went undrafted in the NFL draft, later cut by the Packers after a poor tryout showing. Any ideas who that player is? Well, I'll give you a few more and I bet you'll know him right away. You know, he could have quit football then, you know, after sitting the bench, you know, being undrafted, you know, getting cut by an NFL team. But instead, he stocked grocery shelves on the graveyard shift to feed his family and would train hard every afternoon. Still don't know? Is that right? Well, he played in the Arena Football Leagues and NFL Europe, where he set passing records and led in touchdown passes and as well as championships. He eventually became the third string quarterback for the Rams. Hello, clues, big clue. And became the starter when Trent Green tore his ACL in the preseason game. Hmm, I bet you know. I'll keep going, maybe you do know. But uh, <laughs> I figured you'd like that, Drew, cut by the Packers. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 
Kurt Warner. Lucky guess, right? Well, as a first year starter, Kurt Warner threw for over 4,300 yards and 41 touchdowns. You know, everybody wanted to know and kept asking the question, how had a talent like this been overlooked? You know, why hadn't anyone signed him previously? Hmm, I wonder why that was. Have you ever been overlooked? You know, maybe not the right size or not on a winning team, you know, not have the experience or talent some people are looking for? Well, he continued on with his success and became the 1999 NFL MVP, Super Bowl victory, you know, and he continued to have success. In 2003, though, after several hand and finger injuries and a few poor performances, he was released by the Rams and became the Giants back up to Eli Manning. You know, that's pretty much means you're not going to play. In 2005, though, he signed with the Arizona Cardinals and played sporadically. But in 2008, he became a starter, leading his team to a Super Bowl against the Steelers, where he played his heart out but ultimately lost. And in 2009, he kept setting single game records for passing. You get the idea. And you would think that a man with three Super Bowl victories, sorry, three Super Bowl appearances, a two time NFL MVP, and a four time Pro Bowl selection with thousands of yards, you know, and tons of TDs, you know, a man that retired in January and was elected into the Hall of Fame this year. He'd never had any setbacks or any kind of difficulties, you know, or had to work for his success. And I was absolutely floored when I found out that out of all of the Hall of Fame inductees, he was the only one who was never a starter, never a star, or on a championship collegiate team. No one took a look at him. You know, I'd never heard the whole story of Kurt Warner's life, but after hearing about the difficulties that he faced and the low points in his life, you know, refusing to quit when he got knocked down, cut or injured. Oh, hey, I see a few more joining in. Tiffy, thanks for joining in. Andrew, great to see you. Vicki, hey lady. And there's a few more popping in. If I missed your name going across the screen, I'm sorry. Hey, it's great to have you. Um, but he, Kurt Warner refused to give up on his goals, even when he was stocking grocery shelves. Kurt Warner said that opportunity doesn't arrive when you want it to. You have to work hard for it, but when it's there, you seize that opportunity, give it your best shot, and go for it. Do you have that kind of faith in yourself? Why or why not? So if you heard something that you found helpful or resonates with you, would you please leave a reaction, um, drop a comment in the thread, share your story. You never know when your words might inspire someone. Share the video with anyone you think it might help. PM me if you have questions or want to seize the opportunity to create the life you want. I'll show you how. Now I learned that Life is gonna knock you down over and over again. But what creates the opportunities for you is whether you get up, give it your best, or give up. You know, it doesn't matter when the success happens because it's never gonna be on a timeline that we want. But if you work hard for it, it'll arrive. But the only person who can seize that opportunity and create success that you want is you. So the next time that you get knocked down, do you get up, brush off the dirt, wipe off the blood, and get right back into it? Or do you give up and walk away? Because it's hard. Too hard. Where would Kurt Warner be if he'd given up?